Okay, we're gonna try and replace this convertible top roof here. See what happens. Okay, the new top has come in the mail. Here it is in the house all laid out. Yeah, we need to pull this out to make some space in the garage so we can work. And there we go. You see we got it in the garage. This way we don't have to worry about getting rained or snowed on. And as you can see, the old window, it's separating from the top. It leaks and just looks pretty bad. So we're going to attempt to replace that top, just the outer layer. I bet it's not going to go very fun. Yep, opening up the top. Need to have it open for some parts of this, closed for some parts of this, but let's get started. Okay, we're going to have some screws in the top corners of the top, which we got to remove. That just kind of holds the fabric on. One on each side. There we go. Then once that's out, we got to pull this front trim off. Um, it doesn't pull off very easily but you'll see that it is much, much harder to put back on later. So it's like super tight. There we go. Once we get this started, we can just pry it out. Putting this back on, we actually had to heat it up to get it soft and fit back in that groove. So towards the rear of the window, we have this ball that held it in place. The new one didn't even have that, it just had some string to tie. Then we got these zippers. Got to unzip the zippers. The crazy string mechanisms that are backed by all the folding metal pieces. This is like a puzzle trying to figure out where each of these go. The new one doesn't even have that spring attached. It's just got a string. But yeah, disconnecting all that stuff. Will it go back together the same? Probably not. It's getting closer to coming off. The top kept falling down on us. So we had to keep opening and closing it. Okay, so here you can see we're going to unzip this thing. Taking apart the old tape that somebody put there. So this top was already swapped once, but from what we heard, and it wasn't us, what we heard was the previous owners purchased a replacement top that did not come with the rear window. And when they put the rear window in, and then they closed the top, the very first time it popped loose and it's been that way ever since so we're replacing it with a top that actually comes with a window so hopefully that'll make this easier to do got to cut off these rusty staple like things that they put in there and then we can unzip this they sell a zipper unzipper tool for like 80 some dollars we did not buy that. The top that we bought came with what looks like a coat zipper that was just removed off a coat and it actually turns out to work just fine.
And here we are coming up on a third zipper. There's three in total. So same process here. We just got to cut it and unzip it. There we go. Easy to unzip. That's why when we put it back together, you have to put staples on the ends. Otherwise, it'll unzip by itself. Okay, and the inside fabric was tucked in these grooves around the rear window. And guess what? The new one did not have the same grooves. It only had one on the left and the right and didn't really fit into them. You might see that later. Okay, here's a little difficult part. We have this trim that you have to reach from inside with a star key type fitting and remove them. And it's really difficult to reach because it's between the inner trim and the outer. The middle is actually a socket. But it's not impossible. This was not the most difficult part of the project. Once you get it in there, it comes out pretty decent. And there we are removing the center, which is a socket style. Just a nut sitting on there. Okay, this part took a little bit of work and <clears throat> then we figured out we missed one of those star key screws way in the back corner. Once we got that, then it came out okay. Okay, here we are popping out that trim. There's a couple of screws you have to get at from underneath. These are slightly smaller Torx bits. Um, the corners, you gotta watch so it doesn't flop over the edge of the car and scratch the car's paint job. I know they sell blocks that could hold this up, but our kit did not come with that. And then you just Pop out the inner trim. There's those screws we were talking about that you have to get at from the bottom. I think there's only two of them. Might have been three, but I'm thinking it was just two. So that's not too bad once you get it removed. And there's a middle fabric also. So you got the inner, a middle, and then the outer. Once you get all that taken apart, then we needed to disconnect the mount that holds the window itself in. And there we go. We just need to unscrew that wasn't all that easy they were really stiff but it was not impossible putting them on was much more difficult because we had to line it up with those fine threads yar once you get the top off of the vehicle you gotta slide it off this trim and you know what Putting it back on is by far the hardest part of this process. There we can see we could have stopped here and had a pretty cool looking top, but nope, we continued. Whoa, this is it. Trying to get this back on that trim. We spent hours literally this day trying to get it on and you know what we had to stop and come back to it the next day and spent hours trying to slide it on again it finally was done with three people it took three of us forcing this thing to get it on but there you see it from here the rest is going pretty easy So the new one did not come with the brackets to mount to the holders to hold the window up. So we had to drill out the rivets and here we are riveting them onto our new top, new window. And I can tell you a story about the riveter there. That right there is 
the second rivet that it's ever been used on. The first one was the first hole a centimeter away. And you know, we found the riveter. We had it for years. I've had that riveter for like, I don't know, 15 years. So I found the riveter in preparation for this job. We put it on the back bumper of our Jeep just to kind of set it there while we're moving around the vehicles. And next thing you know, oh, somebody needed to borrow the Jeep. And then I remembered a half hour later, dude, where's our riveter? Went to look and it wasn't on the ground anywhere. And drove down the road thinking, well, is the riveter falling off on the road somewhere? No, can't find it on the road call up the person who took the Jeep. They looked at the rear of the Jeep. No, it's not on the rear of the Jeep. Oh man, we start driving towards town, looking on the highway, thinking it's gonna be lost in the ditch or something. Well, it turns out at McDonald's, some guy saw the Riveter on the back of the Jeep and he took it and put it in his truck and he waited for 45 minutes for them to get done eating. And when they came out, he said, hey, you guys had a Riveter on your back bumper. So we got our riveter back and along with that was the baggie with those special zippers and the staples for putting this top on. So as you've been watching the background, it went together pretty quickly. Just zip it up, hook up those window mounts, tuck that front part in, makes it look easy on camera. But there we go, the finished product. Took a lot to stretch it to the front too. It was a lot of work. Right now it's actually really, really tight. We had to manually close it and we're just leaving it sit and stretch. Thanks for watching guys. Hope this helps somebody. Somehow. Some way.